Hey there, everybody. This is Un, wishing you a happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. And I uh, have kind of a splitting headache today, but I don't want to miss another weekend, and I am in the mood to do some recording nevertheless, so just please excuse me if I'm slightly off my game because my skull is throbbing. Also, before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to put in a plug for a longtime friend of the show, that being the one and only Boss Goji. And I would like to encourage you to head over to YouTube username Boss Goji, where our intrepid boss is running a show called uh, The Trials of Boss Goji, involving blind plays of questionable quality games selected by another longtime friend of the show. Alicia Gorenson. And uh, there are two episodes up so far involving the kind of launch titles that do not make a good first impression. So by all means, please uh, check it out and uh, show some love if you're inclined. And with that, we're gonna get on back to Hell, a cyberpunk thriller, where we just acquired a digging unit used by the menials to uh, operate their emotion mining operation at the Mental Asylum. As you may recall, Susie Toast wanted a digging unit in order to uh, attach something called a cyber fry that will uh, badly damage the menials' brains and keep them from exploiting the uh, inmates at the asylum any further. So let's go ahead and bring that digger back on to Susie Toast. And we'll put an end to the menial's illicit operations. By the way, this is all technically optional. We can just skip over all the digger stuff and bring Splits Magnola straight back to uh, Susie here and wrap up that little plot line, but, you know, it's a decent thing to do to help out the, uh, the folks at the hospital, and I'm being fairly completionist here. So let's go ahead and hook Susie up with that digger. We have the digger you wanted, and we've learned that the menials are working Arioch Asylum. You've decided to help me then. I'm so relieved. This is a psionic distorter, a cyber fry. It creates a distortion effect in a radius of 200 yards, causing intense psionic feedback along any external cerebral circuit. Cut to the chase, girlie. It will fry the menials' brains like a large order of fries. They won't be able to harm the inmates at Arioch anymore. And I'll have done it without using my powers against anyone. What good does that do? It's only one gang, one hospital. There are others. It's just a start, Rachel. But it's a good start. You know, Susie mentions that she'll be able to uh, shut down the menials this way without actually using her psychic powers on anyone. But I think... Uh, basically bringing in a couple of hired guns. I suppose technically she's circumventing the Psionic League rules in doing so, but I really kinda don't think that counts with respect to overall ethics. But oh well. Now that we've got the Cyber Fry modified onto the digger, we can head on back to the Asylum. I don't remember where it is. Damn it, where's the asylum? There we go. The 
before we do anything else, let's take a quick look at that there cyber fry. A cyber fry device that has been combined with a collector unit, then altered to counter the effects of both individual devices. Fair enough. Alright, now we're just gonna head over into the other room once I find the hotspot for it. There we go. Uh, get in, kinda taking the long way there, aren't you? Not that I should be surprised by this. It's not exactly unprecedented. Ah, that god awful noise again. Well, real quick, like, because I forgot to do it last time, let's talk to Chet here, the other of the, uh, menials miners. Don't fight it now, girl. Don't fight it. Give me something pleasant. Love, mother, father, warm, wet, carry, womb, die for you, red, mommy, daddy, oh. That's it, girl. Slight change now. Well, at least he seems to be less of an overt sadist than Hump, the other guy working on Korobora. But that's still really creepy, and I think we've had just about enough of this. This should do the trick. in this tunnel. It, it, it hurts my eyes. What the hell? Ah! The pain! My brain's coming out through my ears! Help me! Oh, God, help me! That was kind of ugly, but uh, I suppose it couldn't happen to a nicer couple of guys. We better check in on the patients. They still look a little disturbed. Thank you. Oh my god. Thank you. Well, you're not looking real relieved there, Cora, but uh, I'll take your word for it. It's hopeless, Rach. It's like she's been condemned to hell forever. Well, that's weird. Typically, we actually do get a another uh, expression of thank you from Rita, but it doesn't seem to be triggering this time. I'm free! Thank God I'm free! There it goes. Stay strong, Rita Troy. Well, there's that sorted. How are you doing, Clap? For God's sake, you've maimed me, you've ruined me. I, ah! you know, not so well, apparently, but at least he's in a little bit better shape than Hump and Chet. I wonder if that's maybe because he was a little further away when the Cyber Fry kicked in. 
Anyway, oddly enough, I don't believe Phyllis has anything to say about this whatsoever. Do not mock me, demon, or it will be your blood dripping from my chin. Yep, Phyllis oblivious till daybreak. Well, this is not something I remember to do in the screenshot version of this LP, but I'm gonna make a quick run back to Psionic League headquarters to see if uh, Susie has anything to say about the fact that we completed the Cyberfry side mission. Not sure if she will, but we're being thorough here. Well, did you? Yes, ma'am. We shut them down. The menials? Who else? Your cyberfry works pretty well. That's one part of the black market that won't be hurting sick people anymore. I'm grateful to you for stopping the menials. But remember our deal. You have to bring splits to me. Okay. We do get a little bit of dialogue for that. That's nifty. But as she mentions, we are obligated to bring Splits Magnola back to uh, pay her a little visit. And last time, we did the last thing that we need Scub Stevens for. So it is now safe to uh, bring Splits into the party and dismiss Mr. Stevens. Where is Fitzgerald's? There we go. L'enfant. Hi, Splits. Hey, family man. You and the wife decide whether you're taking me to Susie? Indeed I have, and indeed I will. Let's do it. Alright. Scub, you've served us very well. We thank you for your time, and uh, we now release you back to the loving embrace of your giant beer. Let's take a look at our new recruit. Well, being the down and out drifter that he is, Splits Magnola comes with nothing but his mad psionic skills. But we'll be needing those soon enough, so it's all good. Splits Magnola's psionic capabilities. Okay. Now then, Splits, there's a certain ridiculously named young lady back at Psionic League HQ who'd like to have a word with you. But it wouldn't be a uh, Psionic League focused episode if we didn't take a moment to uh, touch bases with Bachachardo. Bachachardo! Splits? <laughs> I 
thought I smelled a rat. Oh, be nice, Bacha Turtle. We'd better move Splits along before someone else tries to kill him. I hate these damn synesthetes. So damn artsy and sensitive. And you don't talk shit about Bacha Turtle! And I'm not forgetting her, the uh, waterball lady whose name escapes me off the top of my head. She doesn't have anything to say about splits. I'm sure, however, that uh, Columbus will. I think you know this guy, Columbus. <laughs> I know him. I don't get a hug. I'm prodigal sunning here and you're a high hatin'. This isn't easy for me, you know. I mean, you know. I gotta be registering all reds and yellows in your emotive centers. Splits, what happened to your face? I told you when you left that you could never return. Kiss my ass, Columbus. I'm only here because of these two art rejects. And I'm only hanging with them because they helped me toast a menial's kill jack. With a laser shotgun. Oh, these two are containment knuckles? What's going on here? Well, you can call us knuckles, but unlike Sonic, we don't chuckle. We'd rather flex our muscles. What's going on here? Are they having a staring contest? Splits and I are getting are reacquainted. You bringing aren't we? The hand down on us. Splits. Splits. You think I Judas you to Solux's goons? How bad a guy do you think I am? I surfed the gray matter. They checked out. You scanned them without their permission, I assume. They don't even know I was there. No headaches. No dizziness. I'm better than when you knew me, Cub. You chose your fate and you sided with the minions. You have too much to atone for to just walk in here and expect to be welcome. Don't try corrupting Susie Toast of Just watch yourself. Careful, Columbus. You almost threatened to fry my circuits. Not a very league-like thing to do, is it? Well. Clearly no love lost between Professor X and our new buddy. Let's hope he gets along a little better with the toaster. Spoiler, he won't. Game's up, Susie. I scanned these two once they mentioned your name. They think you don't want me back, but I know better. Rachel here thinks you're pathetic. I agree with her, by the way. And old Gideon likes the look of your legs. I agree with him, too, although your ankles look a little heavier. While I was in their heads, I noticed massive cortex scarring and memory overlays. They're holding something out on you. You should scan them, but then you don't pierce the skull. I forgot. Sorry. Doing a nice job blocking my scans, though. <laughs> I can't help but be a little tickled at what he's uh, dug out of the minds of our protagonists, which seems very in character on both parts. Rachel is shitty to everybody, and Gideon, well, I can't be too surprised that he's kind of a closet horn dog. My thoughts are my own. I got involved because I want to help you. When I learned you were running with the menials. How low can you fall, Splits? Every Jack strikes a bad bargain in his life. I bolted the menials when I flashed on their op and Arioch. Managed to finger a D-base that should stake me for years. Interested in a vacation? Thailand's indoor beaches sound good to me. Thailand's indoor beaches? Interesting. Do they have indoor beach ladyboys? You owe us your life, Magnola. Now we need your help. I didn't ask you kids to get involved. 
I had Milwaukee Jack pegged and scanned. I knew his motives, his moves, his mother's maiden name. I'd have made Susie toast out of him, and I'd have done it without blowing Fitzgerald's vid. Sorry, guys, but I don't do pro bono joints. Yeah, I don't know about that, Splits. Milwaukee Jack seemed to have your number enough that if we even so much as talked to you, we broke your puzzle and got you killed. I've had enough. Huh? Susie? I'm more powerful than before, Splits. Get out of my head. Charles. I'll show you the errors. You want to fight, girl? Go your way. Because I'll singe your synapses. You can't stop me. Fry you as soon as I find you. I've been preparing this for months. Hey, get out of there. Preparing to introduce new young banks into your... Christ, that hurts. Frigetic studio. Stop it, Susie. I sense what you're doing, child, and I will not let it stand. Stop me in your own flow access. You'll make me a cripple. Image bundles integrating only need a few seconds. Can't stop you, child. Absorb your force. Make you love me. Gonna kill somebody. Mine's colliding. Look, Look out. out! Oh, dear. This is not gonna end well. Susie, no! Make you over. You will love me. You will love me. You will love me. You will love me. Oh, shit. There's nothing. I've always loved you, Susie. Well, we got a big reveal from the professor there, and <laughs> I'm very amused to find out that with all this drama going on, he manages to keep his balls in the air. That sounded slightly dirty, but never mind. Gideon, what just happened? Why do I have a headache, and what's with these three? Excess psychic discharge. Their minds just came together. Hard. Like a couple of coconuts colliding. Nothing. Nothing there. My whole life. Just a nothing that smells like whiskey. Okay, for all the fun I make of Hell, a cyberpunk thriller, this is one line that I genuinely like. And I kind of like the delivery, too. You know, sometimes having a look in the mirror with clear eyes can be a hell of a thing. Columbus? Do you... What I felt? There are no secrets when minds collide, Rachel. Apparently Susie has more feelings for splits than she was admitting to. You're out of the league, Susie. You were attempting to cripple Splits, to force false memories and images into his mind to make him love you. After all of our work, all of this time, only to have you seduced by the power. But you... You said that you loved... me. False projection. I... I was... alarmed. Concerned that both of you would be killed. You've ruined what we had here, Susie. You have two hours to vacate your chambers. You know, under the circumstances, Columbus, I really think no one's gonna judge you if you stop the PK juggling. Crazy bitch. Almost... killed me. You two still want a psionic? I'm yours. Maybe it's time I use these... Powers for something worthwhile. So long, Susie. Try not to blow your circuit. All wrong. It is all wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Well, this is not a good situation for Susie and Columbus, but it does seem to have given Splits a new lease on life, so I guess that's the silver lining. You guys have anything more to say? You well, know, Susie seems dumbstruck, but, uh, Columbus? I'm sorry for that scene with Susie. I feel very protective of her. That's why I'm kicking her out into the streets. Then you've obviously got a problem with this Splits fellow. Splits is a potent psionic, but he's morally weak and lacks discipline. He abused his gift and chose those demons and the menials over the league, and he did his best to drag Susie into ruin with him. I don't know what that girl sees in him, 
What could make her love someone like that? Well, I guess that's it for the Psionic League. Again, kind of a messy resolution, but... Well, it's a resolution. Alright then. We've got the recruit that we came for, and, uh... That leaves us a little bit cut loose right now, so... Why don't we check in with Dante, see if he's turned up anything new for us. Let's see, where was Dante's apartment? I think it's over here somewhere. Yes, there we go. Hey, Scrivener, how's it hanging? You look excited, Dante. That must mean Deep Throat's contacted us again. What was that address once more? Yeah, Garage. That was it. Oh, looks like we came to the right place. But uh, Dante didn't even get a word in edgewise there, so we'll give him another chance. You two are beginning to make some noise. Boards are texting mad about you. Great. Why don't we just hang targets on our backs? Don't go casters up on me. It's all vagary and e-jabber. Nobody's ratting you. You've got the underground humming. Wireheads think you two are the bugs in the code that can crash the hand. You've got a fan base, kids. I've turned up a half dozen images off the boards that are supposed to be you. None of them real, I hope. Nah, all false sightings. I'm doing my bit to feed the goat, sending out my own fake photos of you under different e-accounts. Also seeding the rumor garden. Drex has been a big help there. We've maxed the rumor mill with top-shelf disinfo. We've told them you were running whiskey in the dust belt, that you were in deep freeze in a front safe house in Cameroon. Sent one out over Anarchy Net, saying you had converted and joined a hand mission working the Wyoming communes. <laughs> Believe me, kids, you live on the lamb as long as I have. You can human engineer with the best. Wow. Full marks for old Oscar. Doesn't always seem like the most lucid guy in town, but uh, when the chips are down, he's got his shit together. Yeah, Drex is an ace maverick. He put out a line that Gideon has gone transvestite and has joined the staff of the J. Edgar Hoover School for Girls. Well, it may sound ridiculous, but uh, until you've seen old Gid in a miniskirt, don't knock it. Anyway, enough catching up with old friends. It's time we headed back to Deep Throat's Garage. Now then, let's continue where we left off last time. No, first, how about you telling us who you are? I'm... I'm Deep Throat. That's all it is safe to reveal. They could be listening. If they capture you, they could torture my name from you. What I can tell you is that I work in the Pentagon for the Hand as part of the Hell Maintenance Team. I make backup files and help it. They don't think I know what's happening in hell, but I know things. All right, for now at least, but I don't go for this mystery man stuff. 
You need to learn about the Hell system if you have any hope of beating the hand. You need programming expertise to devise a crash program. You must start thinking of Hell as a software product, not as a real place. And any program, especially one this complex, has vulnerabilities that can be exploited. Well, stands to reason. Are you saying we could just introduce a memory overlay bug or something and trash the whole system? That's it? No, no, of course not. It'll take something extremely special, a singularly ingenious crash bug. I doubt there's a virus extant that could cripple large segments of the system. And damned few programmers alive with the know-how or the hardware to program a crash bug. That's why the hand cracks down so hard on technology. They must always remain several generations ahead of everyone else, so that the hell system remains safe. Hey, Blowjob, you want to stop windmilling like that? It's kind of wigging me out. So what are you saying, that there's no hope? I'm saying that the one advantage we may have is that I know the system. If the Freedom Front has computers and programmers of adequate merit, we might prevail. You know how to make the crash bug, then? I fear that I'm not anywhere near that accomplished a programmer. I make backup files all day. I hardly understand the theory behind the code. In practice, I'd be terribly lost. You must find better programmers than me, and then I can help them devise something. All right, fair enough. We're going to need some uh, programming heavyweights. I'm sure old uh, Katarina back at the CFF has got something to contribute, but from the sound of it, we're going to need talent a little higher on the scale than her, too. If that's the case, it's time for you to end this cloak and dagger routine and join us. Join us. Not at the moment. That would be impossible. The Hell staff works and lives in the Pentagon. My movements are constantly monitored. That's why I can't remain long to speak with you. And what are you getting out of all this? Why turn on your masters? I... I was, um... Uh, a believer. God forgive me, I once believed that Solux's measures were severe, but fair and necessary. They're working here, seeing what they have done in the name of God. I came to recognize the true enemy, the true evil, and its name is Celine Sox. I must leave now. Stay in touch with Dante. You will hear from me again. Ah, good old crisis of confidence. Catalyst for whistleblowers everywhere. We're starting to feel toyed with, Deep Throat. You reveal Hell's secrets. You hint that it can be destroyed, but then doubt that anyone has the skill or computing power to do it. You tell us that you can help us, but that you can't leave the Pentagon. Where's all this leading? Did I say crisis of confidence? I meant conscience. Things are changing. Changing very quickly, becoming very dangerous. The hand knows that there is a leak in the programming team. I've done my best to obscure myself, but I begin to fear for my life. Then you've got to get out of there now. Soon. Soon. As soon as I think it possible. In the meantime, you should attempt to access Massimo Eddy. His location is a highly guarded secret. Any high-ranking hand official would have the location stored in his computer. But the information is encrypted. And only the Bureau of Records knows the secret to the encryption. The Bureau offices are in the Federal Triangle. But if Hell's virtual, what does that make Massimo Eddy? He just a hand con? You can't have any special knowledge of Hell if Hell doesn't really exist. It makes him even more valuable to you. Massimo is a quality assurance technician testing the boundaries of the beta version of the Hell Code. Sections of the system were still buggy, and Massimo suffered severe brain damage that had bizarre effects. It left him mad, prone to intense visions, and possessed by demons whose voices speak through him. He's been exposed to the vast contours of the system, 
He does have knowledge of hell. Hell as it really exists. I just hope he's lucid enough to assist us. Oh my. You may remember, if you have a good memory, from uh, Jean Sanmouchois' computer, that uh, Massimo Eddy is the legendary first damned man. At least according to hand propaganda, he was the first man ever sentenced to hell, and now he's a propaganda figure because of his uh, crazy hell-inspired visions. Well, it turns out, uh, according to our good buddy here, that well, he was just a beta tester on an incomplete version of Hell. And I suppose being exposed to a buggy simulation of eternal damnation would kind of do a number on your gray matter. If he really does have secret knowledge, why does the hand keep him alive? Eddie is one more fragment of the lie, one more thing for people to believe in and fear. That's all for now. I'll contact you again very soon. I must make a move for my own safety. Oh, you be careful out there. Stay safe, Knobshine. Got anything more for us, Dante? Look. Hurry up and bust this open so you can do something with Drex. He's eaten me out of house and home. Ah, Dante. What's a few refried beans and pan-fried quails between friends? Drexler? What'd you say? Oh, time to eat. See what I mean? Alright then, uh, nothing more from the uh, good folks at the apartment here, but we have learned from Deep Throat that we can get more of what we need for Massimo Eddy by going to the Bureau of... Records, was it? Yes, Bureau of Records. find that. There we are. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, looks like a pretty bog-standard government office. The Cyber Sweatshop of 2095. A typical records bureau, complete with modern computers, copy machines, and paper, paper, paper. So much paper. You'd think in 2095 they'd have gone a little more digital. But then again, with the hand clamped down on technology, maybe, uh, well, maybe that has something to do with it. Anyway, who have we got here? Got uh, Ms. Stinson on the left and Mr. Calcutta on the right. A clerk exudes a fanatic discipline about her work. An officious, tidy man works at his desk. He exudes the professional contempt of a man who has spent a lifetime refusing people's requests. Okay, he sounds like an asshole, so let's, uh... Let's try Ms. Calcutta first. Er, Ms. Stinson, sorry. May I help you? We're with Reality Containment. Official business involving Massimo Eddy. You'll have to speak with Mr. Calcutta first. He's responsible for information pertaining to Massimo Eddy. Well, crap. Bo Calcutta. Need a moment of your time, sir. We're with Reality Containment. Congratulations. 
I'm certain that your family is quite proud of you. We're investigating something big. A full-blown paranormal catastrophe. We need to speak with Math Moetti. We have clearance. Oh, goody. And may I see this clearance? Ark sent it ahead of us. Surely you received it. I've received no notification. I assure you that I'm not in the habit of misplacing important items such as security clearances. Only people with transgressions clearance can be informed of Massimo Eddy's location. Until you give me such clearance, you may not see him. See Ms. Stinson if you need to complete the application forms. What a dickhead. Alright, back to Stinson. Calcutta told us to see you about transgressions clearance to see Massimo Eddy. Identity templates and clearances can only be obtained from transgressions headquarters. All I can tell you is that to obtain the identity templates, you must know the shape that all transgressions move toward and must come to sooner or later. That's all I can tell you. Hmm. All right then. Apparently, the documentation we need will be found at Transgressions HQ. And lucky for us, that is right down the street in the Federal Triangle. pick the lock again, huh? Okay. That worked. Thank you, Rachel. In the door, Ashanti. That's better. Mr. Hankey. Let's see what you got on Massimo Eddy. Password remains. God's justice. And let's see, where was the Massimo Eddy file? I think that would be under government ops. And so it is. Massimo Eddy. Last night. And we've already heard this spiel. Eddy broadcast. So as pleasant as it is to listen to the dulcet tones of Jeffrey Holder, we will have to uh, input another password in order to get to the transgressions credentials. Well, Ms. Stinson did tell us that we would need to know the shape that all transgressions move towards and must eventually arrive at. Well, this has a fairly simple solution. Consider where we are. We're looking for a shape, and we are in the Federal... If I can type correctly... Federal Triangle. Bingo! This template, stored on a CD-like disk, will allow you to forge copies of official passes on the transgressor's computer. These computerized credentials are the only kind of pass that will allow entry to the Lee Mansion. Okay, first of all, that looks nothing like a CD. 
Well, I guess we might be looking at the jewel case in that icon. Okay, fair enough. Second of all, the Lee Mansion. Um, the description of the item just straight up told us where Massimo Eddie is. So technically we should be able to go there right now. However, for whatever reason, the location does not actually appear on our map until we actually get this taken care of. So, uh, like the description said, this is just a template, so we will need a good forger to take care of the job for us. Ms. Benet, if you would be so kind. And we now have Transgressions Credentials. An official quality forged transgressor's path. Perfect. Dickhead. Ah, what shock and disbelief on my part. I thought you two were con artists. Now I see you were merely incompetent. You finally obtained transgressions clearance. Very good for you. Mr. Eddie resides in the Lee Mansion in Arlington. That's right. The home of the first damn man overlooks the National Cemetery. Quite appropriate, don't you think? When you do find Mr. Eddie, be aware there are other security measures in place. You had best be more prepared for them than you were for me. Well, I suppose we shouldn't have expected that it would be as simple as walking in the door and striking up a nice chat with the first condemned man. So we do have a little more prep work to do. And one thing we need is at the office of Mr. Beautiful. Yes, it's been a long time since we visited old Pazuzu. He was very important in our early quest, but has since kind of fallen by the wayside. So it'll be nice to see how he's been doing. Let's see, where was the interface? There it is. Hey, Scub. Thanks again for all your help. And now we go ahead and have a look in on Demonic Dennis Hopper. Gideon, what the hell are you even doing? Shit on a shingle, what happened here? Uh-oh. Tell us where our people are being held, or you'll get what happened to your boss here. I think there'll be more blood when we shoot you, eh? Oh dear. Looks like uh, Mr. Beautiful's uh, little dabbling in organized crime has uh, kind of gotten him in over his head, huh? What the hell's going on? What's with Beautiful? He... he's an android? Oh, come on, Rachel. Haven't you been paying attention? You know, the demons, when they appear in the uh, corporeal world, being meats and all that, you know, Asmodeus? You don't remember any of this, do you? Was an android. Now, he's a pile of scrap. He's been scamming us for years, and thinking he was untouchable because he was a demon. Losing Crystal Getty, that 
was the failure. The demonstration of weakness we needed to plug a hole in him. <laughs> now we find out he's a machine. Just one more scam. His last scam. Oh yeah, the whole uh, Crystal Getty escaping thing. Whoopsie doodles! Hey man! You think I'm mad enough to put my hide at risk? I'm Mr. Freakin' A Beautiful. There are dozens of you wise guy, psychopathic hard-ons looking to make a rep by plugging someone with position and the freaking stones to back it up. Mm, hi, Pazuzu. I thought he was dead. I look dead to you, hotcakes? Been close and I'll chew your ears off. He's been talking like that since we blasted him. Shut up! Or I swear to God, I'll blow your head to pieces! You're bluffing like a fire hall card shark, you simple spick bastard! You wouldn't finish the job, cause you're hoping I'll tell you what's on that dad! That's it! I'm going to blast him back to hell! That's enough, man. Don't do that yet. He's right. We might need him to get Delmonico and Carlos back. You almost blew it once when you shot him up like this. You'll remember Carlos Portillo and Delmonico Ferlinghetti, the uh, two older mob bosses playing cards in the uh, hostage hell pit run by Mr. Beautiful. Same place we rescued Crystal Getty, leading to this little uh, situation. So he was an android. That explains a lot. I, I guess all the other demons on Earth are synthetic as well. Rachel, please try to keep up with the rest of the class. Alright, so the main thing we came here for was the pool cue, which as you'll remember, Abinidus would not let us take before. Well, I don't think he's going to be complaining about it anymore, so, uh, yeah. Now then, let's have a look at the new players in this situation. Over here we have Manuel Salinas. And the uh, Italian gentleman over here is Secadine Mardo. And we have not so much Mr. Beautiful anymore hanging around, but, well, just his head. Huh, why can't I look at, uh, Manuel here? Oh well, we'll do him last. Zuzu may have lost his body, but his spirit is still intact and residing in his still-functioning noggin. A grim, silver-haired killer stands amidst the circuitry and metal that was Mr. Beautiful. Alright, let's try it through the menu. A man with the look of a professional killer stands over the smoldering remains of Mr. Beautiful. Well, Dennis, what have you got to say for yourself? Rachel, get him, kill these two, drill holes in them, plug them, plant them, I want them dead. We'll bury them in Arlington, just like the Dagos, and dump their bodies right next to where the friggin' Kennedys used to be. I can't believe they're all machines. For some reason, I find it easier to believe they were real demons. Not so beautiful now, are you, Pazuzu? Just another noisy head. Screw you! You were only too happy to suck up when I was on top! One little setback, and then you find out who your real friends are. But I knew it would come to this. You work hard to get a little piece of something, you gotta keep kicking everybody else's dirty paws off it. Apparently his identity chips are stored in the head. Hey! You can't just leave me here. Pick me up! You've got to find me another body. Look, don't be stupid. I can help you out, man. 
I know everything there is to know about hell. <laughs> Well, we can actually recruit Mr. Beautiful into the party at this point, but you know what? I don't really feel like carrying around a head for the rest of the game, and in fact he's completely useless. He has absolutely nothing that is required at any point for any part of the game. So I say the nay. You pay for this, I got connections! I'm a big man in this town! Alright, Mardo. Why don't you fill me in on uh, what's going on with this dat that uh, Beautiful keeps talking about. I'll only ask this once. Where is pretty boy keeping Delmonico and Carlos? Look what we did to your boss. We are not in good moods. And we don't work for Beautiful. Although no one wants to believe that. Well, uh, yeah, even Beautiful himself wouldn't believe that. And we've had enough of people pointing guns at us. Who cares if Beautiful's destroyed? Thanks, you did us a favor. Whenever I get my head mounted on a body again, I will kick your ass all over Washington. What's on the tape? You are in no position to be asking questions. This dat popped out of your boss's chest when I split it open with my laser. Seems important to him. He threatens my life over it every 15 minutes. We played, but I can't understand a word of it. Frankly, I don't care either. I want Delmonico and Carlos back. We were trying to beat their location out of this rhyming little freak when you two came in. But all we got out of him was a bunch of useless numbers. Though your fists are hard, your brain is stupid! The meaning is there for you to grasp, yet you pursue me hard like a murderous cupid! That which you seek, I now gasp! 11, 23, 14, 26, 25, 9, 10, 6, 25, 13, 13, 10, 17, 17, 23, 26, 9, 20, 14, 17. All the R's are 23. Keep your spirit strong if your menu is set free. With the numbers you can't go wrong, for from the numbers letters come, and with the letters freedom song. See what I'm talking about? What the hell is that? Gideon, it's obviously a code. I strike you to a deal. You find Patil, and I'll let you have this deck. The boss obviously wants it back pretty bad. Damn it, he's not our boss. I run their lives, the ungrateful shits. <laughs> they rule the city. They grow drowsy on my food and whiskey, and any sexual perversion they can dream up. Fresh fruit in the wintertime. Nothing's too good for my people. You're not helping, Dennis. What do you work for him or not? The tapes was something, huh? You find the boys and it's yours. Take that obnoxious head with you. Okay, okay. Well, the cursor hotspot doesn't seem to be working on uh, Manuel, who I think we should be able to talk to, but, uh... Oh well. And Abonidas has nothing else to add, so, uh... Yeah. That leaves us with a puzzle. As you might have expected, that sequence of numbers that was spat out by Abonidas is uh, what we will need to determine the uh, physical world locations of Carlos and Delmonico. Now he said that all the letters were numbers and that the R's were 23. So with 26 letters that'll wrap around so that 1 equals V and you can figure it out from there. And those uh, are relevant to the jukebox which 
As you may recall, Abinidus would not let us investigate while Beautiful was in one piece, but we can check it out now. These song titles are amazing. Reputable Perversion by Viscous Fluid. Butter and Necrophiliacs! Well, that sounds like a party and a half. By the Cacking Roaches. That's a good band. And Where's My Mama by Nixon's Brood. Wonderful stuff, hell. Wonderful stuff. Anyway, if you uh, work through Rabinitas' coded numbers, you will find that the songs we need are E3, D9, and E8. So that'll be a brimstone over easy. And where's D9? There we are. Reputable perversion. Always my number one summer jam. And finally, E8. The ever popular Damnation Avenue. What is this? Look what he's done to my boys. Don't blow your motherboard, Mardo. If this is what I think it is, your men are fine. A little sweaty and down a few million dollars to a minty fresh demon who deals from the bottom. <laughs> but they're unharmed. You owe us a debt. We had a deal. I just want to get the hell out of here. I swear to God, Manuel, if I ever get involved with demons again, you'll be doing me a favor to blow my brains out. It would be my pleasure to do it, Second D. Here's your that for all the good it's going to do you. Pleasure doing business with you, Mardo. Now we need to give this to someone with the right audio tech to decipher what's on this dat. Okay, doesn't look like anyone in here has anything to say to us. But we can take a look at the room. A secret chamber with two psychopomps which, in their own way, act as the secret passage to another place. Never retreat. The master plots and works his magic. With your help, his rule will be complete. Well, a little encouragement from Abinidas. That's nice of him. Plunge ahead. Okay, that's all for that. And you know what? I'm starting to have a change of heart. After all we've been through, it would seem a shame to leave Mr. B here on the uh, floor of his office. What do you say? We got a deal. Are you taking me with you? And conveniently enough, the last thing that we ever need Sophia Bene for we've just done, after she uh, 
forges the transgressions credentials for you. That's the last thing you ever need out of her. So I guess we can cut her loose. Don't just stand there. What if you pick me up and carry me? Oh, we gotta find me a body, man. Well, happy trails to you, Sophia, and uh, sorry about your daughter. Well, unsurprisingly, the head has nothing, and as I mentioned earlier, he has no actual purpose, but he occasionally has a line or two, just a little commentary to offer on things, so we'll take him along for the extra dialogue. Oh, and we got a little gift from uh, Mr. Secadine Mardo, didn't we? I can't believe they're still using digital audio tape in 2099. A high-tech DAT audio cartridge that pops out of Mr. Beautiful's body upon his sudden demise. Its contents are impossible to decipher without expert assistance. 2095, I meant. Anyway, I think we've done enough for one session. We've got Dennis Hopper's head in our inventory, we've got uh, an audio tape to check out, and we've got some business with Massimo Eddy. So, looks like we've got a full dance card for next time. As always, it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bacha Chardo!